Were you there during 9-11? I was. Oh my God, and you're an Arab. Yes. How was the time in New York City after 9-11 for you, personally? You know, being asked if I support Al-Qaeda just randomly, okay. you know, by people. ISIS, for instance, they would kill me before they kill you. What? Oh my God. I was like, where are we? Why? Everything's in Arabic. And I wanted to wear tight jeans and show like some shoulders and show like some leg, you know? I can't do that with a hijab. When I was 30, I was like, okay, you know what? There's no time like right now. I'm 30 years old, time to start living my life and like just doing what I want to do now. Mm -hmm. So I took it off. So it was never like a burden to me. It was never anything. I just felt like I outgrew my scarf. You outgrew your scarf by the curiosity of the world that yes. it wouldn't allow you to experience with it on. Yes. I felt naked. My arms were showing, my calves were showing. I was too outspoken. I shouldn't have said this, shouldn't have said that. You know, I had to watch what I, dry, watch, watch what I wore all the time, watch how I acted. I couldn't really be myself. And Arabs would be like, no, you're Arab. You're, you're Iraqi, it's from your father's side. And I saw the, the wrong side of Islam too because of my father. Because my dad had two wives at the same time. At the same time? At the same time. He did not think that I should get too educated for a woman. Uh, he wanted me married at 16. When I quit my job after the year of teaching, he punished me and kept me home for nine months. So I really rely on the beautiful aspects of our culture, even though there's like negative stuff where it could be more male driven, where it could be, you know, females don't have as many rights. But I feel like that's changing also like with the younger generations. And I feel like we're, a lot of us are tired of like defending ourselves constantly. No, I don't agree with this. No, I don't, I'm not violent. No, I don't, you know, we just want to live in peace and we just want to live our lives like everybody else, like you do, like the rest of the world does. Not constantly like speaking out and defending what we believe in. It's like, no, these are like, there's a whole different group of people, you know? I'm an Arab, like you see me, you know, I just, I just love to live life. You know, it, there's a lot more to being Arab. Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Polish Girl in America. I'm here with my friend Zara. Hi. Hi. And we're gonna talk about what it's like to be an Arab in the United States. Yep. Join us for the episode. Polka, Polka. w Ameryce. Jesteśmy w ogóle w takiej okolicy z kurami w knajpce Alchemist w Fort Lauderdale. Bardzo ładne miejsce. Let's start with your background. Okay. Tell me about your parents. Where were they born? So my mom was born in Austria, so she's Austrian. Her lineage is Austrian, some Hungarian, and my dad is Iraqi, and he was born in Baghdad, Iraq. Mm -hmm. And you were born in the States? No, I was actually born in Vienna, Austria. My dad left Iraq because of Saddam, and he went to Austria, which is where he met my mom, and they had me. Cool, Saddam Hussein. Yeah, basically. Yeah, he was in the group that was kind of like anti-Saddam, trying to bring him down, and Saddam was killing people's families, and kind of searching for people who were against him and his parents were like you need to be safe so they sent him to austria out of all places i'm not sure why how old was he he was in his early 20s after you were born in austria how did you end up in the states so we were in i was in austria for about three and a half years my dad actually went to florida vero beach where he wanted to be a pilot so he moved to Vero Beach because there was nothing for him in Austria, especially as an Arab man in Austria back in the 80s. It's not much. So he came to America. He wanted to be a pilot for like small planes. And so he moved us there when I was about three and a half years old. And then after that, he couldn't become a pilot because he wasn't a citizen. And he was waiting on his green card and citizenship. And so you can't really fly if you don't have it. So we moved to New York City, which is where I spent a big part of my life. Mm -hmm. New York is also a big part of me. So how did you like living in New York City? Oh, I loved it. I lived there from when I was about four till 19. Cool. Loved it. It was like a big part of my upbringing, the culture, the people, the attitude. Were you there during 9-11? Oh my God, and you're an Arab. Yes. How was the time in New York City after 9-11 for you personally? 
For me personally, it was very tense. I was in my first year of college. I was going to college in this small town called New Rochelle, which is about an hour from New York yeah. City. And uh, it was an all-girl college because my dad, that we can go into that, but my dad wanted me away from men. Culturally. We're going to talk about yes. it. We're going to yes, talk about are. it. Yes, we are. 9-11 happened. I was actually at home, and my mom and dad were working at a Muslim school, an Islamic school, because we grew up Muslim. And he, uh, they were getting threats every day to the school. My campus shut down for over a week, and we were hearing stories about women getting their hijabs, the scarves pulled off their head. I was wearing hijab at the time, so I was covered. Um, your eyes were visible or your whole face? My whole face. Everything else was covered, so just my hands, my feet, and my face were showing at all times. So I had long sleeves always, long pants, and then the hijab to cover my hair. Mm -hmm. um, and so I heard a lot of women were actually getting their hijabs ripped off on the subway, girls were getting pushed onto the tracks, and so it was very tense and we were, we didn't leave our house for a week and a half after 9-11. Oh. At all. At all? At all. I, I mean, heard that like uh, Muslim or Arabic stores were burned out, yes. people were, yeah. it so was we were really afraid. bad. Yeah, we were afraid. We were hearing stories. Thankfully, nothing happened to us except being called terrorist on the subway or, you know, being asked if I support Al Qaeda just randomly, okay. you know, by people. Um, but when I got to school, the administration was actually really nice. They're like, if you have any issues at all being Muslim or Arab, like, please let us know. It'll lead to immediate expulsion. So I had no issues personally, except for just being called a terrorist here and there on the subway, which mm -hmm. I had. Way before 9-11, I was called that as a kid. So at that point, I was like, all right, thank you. But it was, it was fine. I mean, I didn't have any issues. My family, thank God, didn't have any issues. So it was all right. We survived it. But then we moved to Michigan after that because my dad didn't really want to be there. He wanted to be around more Arabs. We moved to Dearborn, Michigan, which is the highest Arab concentration of Muslims outside of the Middle East. And so we wow, moved there. Wow, what's the name of the city again? Dearborn. Oh, wow. I yeah. No. When I moved there. What? Oh, my God. I was like, where are we? Why? Everything's in Arabic. Like stores, like CVS, the CVS, and then it says like pharmacy in Arabic underneath it. So I was like, what the hell is this? Going from New York, which is full of culture and full of people, full yeah. of ethnicities. Yeah. Everything on our street was Arabic. And... I was like, where the hell are we? Our neighbors were all Arab. Coming from Jamaica, Queens, where we had like Hispanics, Blacks, Asian, all on our street, one street, to only Arabs on our street, only Arabs. Didn't, didn't make you feel good that you're surrounded by- No. You? Okay. Tell I me. love culture. I love people. I love learning about culture. You know, because Muslims, okay, so Arabs and Muslims, like we're not all, so not all Arabs are Muslim and not all Muslims are Arab. So like I knew Muslims who were from Bangladesh, from Pakistan, from parts of Asia, right? Indonesian Muslims. Like I knew people from everywhere. This was all Arabs on my street. All Arabs and all Muslims on my street. So it was just like a culture shock for me even because it's like, okay, there's like no diversity here. I've grown up with nothing but diversity. There's not even a white person on my street. There's not a black person on my street. Like, where are we? My first year I was so depressed. I didn't want to make any friends because I was like, I'm going back to New York after this. There's no way I'm staying here for the rest of my life. I just, I couldn't see myself doing it. You told me that you don't date Arab men. A lot of the Arab culture can be very male dominated. Uh, I'm very independent. I'm very outspoken. And even if the husband maybe is outspoken um, and not so like dominating, the family might be so like there could be a clash i dated a couple arabs growing up and it just it did not work out i was not a fan we clashed a lot i was too outspoken i shouldn't have said this shouldn't have said that you know i had to watch what i dress watch what i wore all the time watch how i acted i couldn't really be myself so i just stopped dating arab guys mm -hmm. tell me about your father and your brother because you say it's it's a culture dominated by men. Yes. So it also had an effect on your family. Yes. How did it have an effect on your family? My dad was very, very, very like, I called him a dictator growing up. <laughs> he was extremely abusive, physically, mentally, emotionally. Um, he did not think that I should get too educated for a woman. 
Uh, he wanted me married at 16. So like when I got out of high school, he was like, you need to get married now. And I was like, no, can I finish college first? Like, let me graduate college. And then when I graduated college, he's like, okay, now you need to, now you need to get married. And I'm like, I don't want to. Uh, he didn't want me to study journalism, so I snuck and studied journalism. He what had no mean idea. You snuck? Yeah, I told him that I was studying to be an English teacher, but I lied. Wow. I was studying journalism. And when I told him that I wanted to be a journalist, he's like, it's not a woman's field. It's not for women. For women, go be a teacher. And then when my brother, by the way, wanted to be a teacher, my brother's like, that's too feminine. Girls are teachers. So, yeah, it was very interesting. My brother had all the rights in the house. I have two younger half-sisters. Because um, my dad had two wives at the same time. At the same time? At the same time. Your dad had two wives? Yes. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. He, uh, so he married my mom. We came to America. He met this American woman who already had a son from a previous marriage. She needed a husband. And he's like, come on in. Come live with us. But you cannot do it according to American law. No. He got married to my mom legally, but he got married to the second wife just religiously. Okay. With the imam, which is like a priest in our culture, okay. in our religion. Are yeah. you very religious now? No. So I was religious. I wore my hijab until I was about 30 years old. My dad disowned me when I was like 24, okay, wait, 23. Let's go back. Why yeah. did your dad disown you? I wouldn't get married. And that's the reason your dad doesn't want to know you? Yes. Because you didn't get married at the age of 24, by the age of 24. Yeah. So he would bring, so after I graduated college, he made me be a high school teacher for a year. He found out I studied journalism and he was very upset. <laughs> and he's like, well, I don't care. You're going to be a teacher. So he put me, he found a school that didn't need certification a religious, like Islamic school, and I taught English high school. Terrible, hated it, hated the whole year. What was Terrible. the worst part? The principal would hit on me and no one believed me. Because uh, uh, I was this young woman teaching, fresh out of college. He was an older man with a reputation in the community. So he would hit on me all the time and no one believed me. What did you do to make him hit on you? You must have been flirty. I was a 20. Three, 20, I was 22 at the time. I was a 22 year old virgin. Like, what am I doing with this like 60 year old man? Um, that and then just like controlling students. I mean, I was fresh out of college myself, right? I had no like background in teaching. So I kind of just made things up along the way. But so he punished, when I quit my job after the year of teaching, he punished me and kept me home for nine months. I was not allowed to leave without my mom, even if it's to go grocery shopping. He just kept me home. And every month he had a new suitor for me, a new guy to talk to. He would bring you guys to talk to? To get married, yeah. So, but I was in my 20s. I was like 22, 23 at the time, 23. And he would bring me guys like in their late 30s who wanted to get married right away and have babies. I wanted to experience life. I didn't experience life. I wanted to travel the world. I wanted to like meet people, you know, fall in love. No, he didn't want that. So after about eight, nine months of that, and every one of them not working out for whatever reason, usually me, <laughs> sabotaging. <laughs> sabotaging. <laughs> okay, if, if you don't get married within the next few weeks, get out of my house, you're not my daughter. And my mom was there, and my mom, who was always like kind of quiet, she ended up saying, okay, well, if that's the case, then I'm leaving too, and I'm taking my son. And a few weeks later, we moved out of my dad's house, and that was it. So your mom split with your dad because of you also? Yeah, but I mean, they had a terrible marriage. Terrible marriage. He was very emotionally abusive towards her. So she was also looking for a way out? Yes. Yeah, and I think that was finally like the last straw. Like, okay, we're out. Yeah. So then you're 24 and you guys move from mm -hmm. your father's house. Yes. What happens with you? How do you treat your fact of being an Arab? How do you feel about it? after that traumatic situation? I mean, I was very, for a long time, I used to tell people that I was Austrian first and then Arab. Like people would be like, no, you're Arab. And I'm like, no, I'm Austrian. I was born in Austria. I speak German. You know, my Arabic- Speaks to Deutsch? Yeah, I speak Deutsch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, that was my first language. That's good though. That was pretty good. You sounded good. Uh, and my Arabic is limited. I speak it, but not like super fluently. So I was like, I'm Austrian. Obviously, I'm Austrian. And Arabs would be like, no, you're Arab. You're, you're Iraqi, it's from your father's side. And I was like, no, I'm Austrian. So for a long time, I actually denied being Arab. 
just because I felt like my father was really the only person I knew as Arab, right? Like he, him and his friends, whoever he brought into our circle, and they were all the same. But it wasn't until my older years that I became proud to be an Arab because like he was not, he was not like speaking for the whole Arab community. You know what I mean? Like he was not the, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the leader of all the Arabs. That's not what it was. You know, it, there's a lot more to being Arab. It's about just community. We're very giving people. We're very welcoming people. Arabic is a beautiful language. Um, our countries are beautiful. We, we have great food. We're very generous. We're loving. You know, we're accepting as people. Like, for instance, if you came with me, for instance, to Iraq or an Arab country, people would love you. They want to introduce you to our culture. They want to introduce you to our food. They would love that you're there. You know, but my father was not a good representation of that. He was the opposite. He was very judgy. He was very, which I'm not saying Arabs are not judgy. You know, we are judgy people, but no more than other cultures, you know, other like minority cultures. And I just didn't know because everybody I knew who was Arab was similar to my dad. So I had this idea about being Arab. So now I say I'm Arab before I'm actually Austrian because I do feel like I have a lot of, I encompass a lot of the Arab culture. You know, if you come to my house, like I, I want to feed you. I want to host well. Like we're big, big on hosting and being like, you know, generous, making sure that you're fed, making sure you have everything you need. When I come to your house, I never come empty handed. You know, I always bring something that's part of our culture. So I really rely on the beautiful aspects of our culture, even though there's like negative stuff where it could be more male driven, where it could be, you know, females don't have as many rights. But I feel like that's changing also like with the younger generations. Okay, so that's the thing. Because it, it's a stereotype about Muslims and in general yeah. Arabs that the w women are not treated right. Yes. So you confirm that it's a men's dominated culture. culture. Yeah, but okay. not religion. Not religion. No. Okay. Because there's so many Muslims in the Arab countries, the two kind of become one. In Islam, which I was raised Muslim, and I saw the, the wrong side of Islam too because of my father, right? Like he said everything was Islam, but it was actually his culture. It wasn't the religion. In the religion, women actually have a lot of rights. We have a right to work. We have a right to uh, wear the hijab or not. We can choose whether to not wear it. We have a right to education. Women should be educated in our culture. You know, we have a right to choose whether or not we want a child. Like we can't be forced to have a child. So we do have rights as women in Islam, but because the Arab culture is so intertwined, it becomes one. And then it looks like the culture is the religion, but it's not. They're like two very separate things. If you go like Indonesia has the highest Muslim population in the entire world. And they actually practice the religion. Like Indonesian women, what, there's, I think there's a president, a woman president in Indonesia. Um, in one of those countries, maybe Malaysia, which also has a lot of Muslims. So don't quote me on that guys, sorry. But I know one of those Asian countries that has a lot of Muslims has a woman leader. So, you know, like it's okay to be like prominent, it's okay to be like an independent woman, but without the culture. Mm -hmm. How was that time that you decided to take off your hijab? What was it like and why? Why did I take it off? Yeah. Uh, I took it off because I just felt like I wasn't doing it justice anymore. I had just found my freedom. Okay, so describe it to me. What, 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 what happened? So when I left my dad's house, I got married right away. I met a white guy. You got married after all? Yeah. Oh my God, that fast? Like two years later, yeah, a year and a half later, I met a white guy. He was a Muslim convert. He had converted. So laid back, One, like complete opposite of my father. And so I was like, oh yeah, this is what I should be doing. I should get married, right? Like it's part of the religion, get married. And it was like impounded like in my head, get married. And so we got married. Worst decision, worst decision. He was just not a great husband, very lazy. I ended up like doing everything, so I got divorced. And then slowly after I got divorced, I dated a Catholic guy from Poland actually. Oh, cool. He was a Polish guy. And we were together for four years and he treated me actually better than anybody ever. Okay, a Polish guy treated her better than any other guy. Yes. 100%. He was my best boyfriend ever. He was my best boyfriend. I loved him. <laughs> but unfortunately, we just had different ideas on where to go in life. Yeah, so we course. ended up breaking up. Um, but after that, I just was like, you know what? I haven't lived life. Like, I want to go to clubs. 
I want to try alcohol. I hadn't really tried alcohol. I want to smoke weed. Like I had never really smoked weed, you know? And I'm like, I can't do that with the hijab on. So wait, you had the Polish guy when you had the hijab on? Yes. Was he okay with it? He with loved it. He was totally fine. He was he was the most respectful. Him and his whole family were so respectful. Where were they? In Michigan? Yeah. What the hell? Yep. Yeah. Go Polish Michigan. I know. Folks. Yes. It was amazing. He was, they were so great. Like, you know, I don't eat pork. So they made sure to always have an extra meal for me at Thanksgiving or Christmas. Um, we don't really celebrate Christmas very much, but like they brought me into their Christmas traditions and they always had gifts for me. Like it was so cute. It was my first Christmas ever. And I just realized that there was like so much in life that I had never experienced. And a lot of it, I couldn't really do with the hijab because I wanted to try alcohol. You know, we're not allowed to drink in our religion. Um, and I didn't want to like start drinking with the hijab on. Like that's terrible. It's a terrible representation of the scarf. And I wanted to wear tight jeans and show like some shoulders and show like some leg, you know? I can't do that with the hijab. So when I was 30 years old, I just took it off. So how was it the first time you went out without the hijab, like with shorts showing your body or skin? Okay, so it was a very gradual, very gradual, oh my God. So the first time I actually went out without the hijab, I was with my Polish boyfriend. We had gone up north. When I would know nobody. And I was like, I want to try what it feels like to not wear it because I want to make this decision, but I want to like do like a trial run, you know? So we went out and I just, I felt like myself, you know? I wasn't like worried about image as much or like what I'm doing if I'm doing the right thing. Because when you wear a hijab, you have to represent the religion. Oh, okay. That's you the know? symbol of it? You yeah, it's represent? a symbol. Yeah, it's a symbol of religion. So you can't be out just clubbing it, you know? So I was like, okay, let me try it out. So I tried it. I liked it. I was like, okay, I can get used to this. I wore short sleeves for the first time. No shorts yet, short sleeves and capris. So I was showing a little calf and I felt very naked. Really, you felt yeah. naked? Yes, because like my ears are out, my hair is out, you know, like my, it was so great to feel the wind blowing in my hair outside. You never outside. did that before? No, because I was always wearing scarf. As soon as I left the house, I would have a scarf on. So you literally would never wear a t-shirt no. like this ever outside? Never. Amazing. That's never. why you felt naked? Yeah, I felt naked. My arms were showing, my calves were showing. So maybe six or seven months later, we had broken up a little after that. And what was the reason, remind me? We just wanted, he, I wanted to travel the world and he was very happy with his, where he was. Okay. Like he didn't want to experience things like I did. Okay. And we just had to part ways, but. Makes sense. Yeah. And when I was 30, I was like, okay, you know what? There's no time like right now. I'm 30 years old, time to start living my life. And like just doing what I want to do now. Mm -hmm. So I took it off. How and has your life been since? I you would, I would, I won't go back to wearing it. Not that I like respect women who wear it, and I think it's actually more courageous nowadays to wear the scarf than to take it off. Yeah. I don't want to say I felt free because I never felt oppressed wearing it, ever. Like it wasn't a, an oppression thing at all. Even when you were after 9-11 in New York, like no. you never felt oppressed? I never, I never even thought about taking it off back then. So in the US, you would say Arab people, it's comfortable to live as an Arab person? For most cities, most big cities, yeah, I think so. I think like I've been to like little cities where I was like stereo like I did have like people stereotyping me or calling me names, but like big cities, no, no one cared. But I like I never felt oppressed. I just like I wanted to do things that were not part of the religion, you know, that would be against the religion. And I can't be doing it practicing and wearing hijab. So because a lot of people when I took it off, they're like, oh, congratulations, you're free. But I never like. I never felt like imprisoned by it. Yeah, you, you never know? felt not free. No. It's just a stereotype of people who talk about yes. your culture, yes. your religion. Yes. Yeah. So it was never like a burden to me. It was never anything. I just felt like I outgrew my scarf. You outgrew your scarf by the curiosity of the world that yes. it wouldn't allow you to experience with it on. Yes. Yeah. How do you feel? You say you wouldn't go back to it. How do you feel as an Arab though? Do you go to mosques? Do you like... I don't practice religion you anymore don't at, all. at all. No, I'm no very holidays. spiritual. I celebrate holidays with my friends because you know they practice it still. But I don't really. I haven't been to a mosque in a while. Not because I'm against it. You know, I just I'm not religious. I don't belong there. I'm more spiritual. I believe in a god or a higher power. I believe in being a good person, and that's it. When have you ever been to Iraq? No. I've been to Iran. You've been to Iran. Yeah. How was it? It was actually very beautiful. I wish more Tehran period. or yeah. okay cool Tehran Isfahan I went to a few of the cities there cool it's gorgeous okay so 
you know, I'm a wife of a Jew and I practice his holidays with him. Yeah. So it's America, right? We are all a melting pot. Yeah. So how do you feel being surrounded by, by all those different religions and all those different people? You feel, you feel I good? I love it. You love it. Okay. I love it. I'm, I mean, I know that like Israel and Palestine, you know, we are at war, but like, I mean, I don't, I have Jewish friends. Like I have no problem with the Jewish religion at all. Mm -hmm. And I actually love to learn about other people's religions and their ways and like, some of the things they practice, which are very similar to Muslims, by the way. You know, like eating kosher is very similar to what we do. Mm -hmm. um, so no, I don't, I don't have any issues. I love it. Okay. Um, what about the stereotypes about Arabs in the world? How do you conquer them? Do you ever go in discussions defending the culture oh, and the absolutely. religion? absolutely. What do people say and what hurts you the most? What's the biggest misunderstanding about it? I think that we're violent people. They're not violent. No. Uh, there's like one point something billion Muslims in the world. Can you imagine if we were all violent, what the world would look like? No. So one fourth of the world is Muslim. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty big. Um, and so just imagine if we were all violent, you know how they paint us as like violent terrorists. I mean, I've been asked like, do you support Al Qaeda? Do you support, you know, the Taliban? Do you support whatever? And I'm like, no, like, Muslims died on 9-11 too. Like we were part of the victims. And honestly, like ISIS, for instance, they would kill me before they kill you. Because you don't wear hijab. Because I don't wear hijab, but I was Muslim. So I'm gonna be the victim of ISIS before you are the victim of ISIS because I should be wearing hijab. I should be covering up according to them. You are an American, this is what you do, you know? So ISIS kills Muslim. Mm -hmm. So. When I'm asked, like, do you support? I no, I don't support ISIS. I've been Hamas, asked that before. Hamas is also like a terrorist organization to you, or you think Hamas is like part of people? That's it's a complicated. very complicated yeah. question. I think because before, when we when I when we talked about it, you say us, like it's our war kind of thing, Palestine and Israel, Hamas and Israel. So yeah. you're identifying with all the Arabs living in those yes. uh, okay, Middle East, Christian, Muslim, Jew. I mean, because there's Palestinian Christians, there's Palestinian Jews okay. living there. So you just support, that's why you said us as yeah. in Palestinians. And stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Because I grew up with Palestinians. I knew what their lives were like when they lived in Palestine way before it became, you know, became a big news thing. You know, I knew their lives there. I knew what happened. Mm -hmm. So you're curious about other cultures and you live surrounded by them in the USA and you don't feel very torn by other people for being Muslim. You are, you're allowed to be a Muslim here. Yeah. But you also don't practice your religion. I don't. But that's for personal reasons. Like it has nothing to do with society or anything else. I just, I don't personally agree with some of the rules and with religion period, not just Islam, just religion overall. And okay. I just. Are you an atheist? No, I, I would say agnostic, spiritual. I say, I'll tell people I'm spiritual. When they ask if I'm Muslim though, I'll be like, yes, I grew up Muslim, you okay. know, because there's still parts of Islam that I carry. Like there's like a little like part of the Quran that you read for safety. So every time I fly, I read it. Oh really? For the whole plane. Yeah. So like there's still things that I like kind of have within me just because like I grew up like that, but I don't like practice it in my daily life. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think if you were still Muslim Muslim, would you be friends with me or any Absolutely. other people? Yeah. Would you still be friends with other 95 people? 95% of my friends when I was wearing the hijab were not Muslim or oh, Arab. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. I was always loud mouthed. I was always like... Would, would your dad have anything against it to have oh, friends? Oh, absolutely. So he hated friends He hated. He hated it. Yep. He even hated my Muslim friend who wore his hijab because she was like... I love how the garbage is right behind you. <laughs> Yeah, it looks so good. Just Look trash, at all the just garbage. trash hanging out. Yeah. Hi. Is that your target? No. Oh, no. We're just making fun of things. Yeah. It is. Um, you guys are sitting in the wrong space. Are you filming this? Yeah. yeah. Oh, hello. Hello. We're doing an episode. Cool. Yeah. Recording. You guys make movies? She does YouTube. YouTube videos. Oh, very nice. She's doing some talks. You can mention the alchemist. Oh yeah, we're at, at the and alchemist. And how delicious the food is. It actually so really good. was. So you good. didn't make it yourself, so don't act like. <laughs> oh, I could make it. I know how to make all the food. Oh, I'm sure I you can. I believe it. 
I believe it. Yeah. Good. Have you guys enjoyed it? It was really good, Welcome actually. Sushi here. I really love cool. that. Boutique. We're definitely going to come yeah, visit. Yeah, we're going to come that. for sushi. And I'll be working in that pizza container right behind you guys. Okay. What's that's your a, name? Sam. That's a drive Sam? Window. Zara. Zara? Yes. I love that name. Thank you. I have so many clothes by you. Of course. It's all mine. I know. My you store. Made it yourself. I did. Just like I make it Hand myself. sewn. There you go. <laughs> so. Huh? Is he gay? Is he gay? That's the funniest question you ask at the end. If not, I'm going to hit on him. Yeah. So that's also something. You can hit on men, though. I, oh, I used to hit on them all the time. Even when hijab? Oh, yeah, absolutely. In hijab, How do you think I got men? my Polish boyfriend? Oh, right. Yeah, you hit on men. I was oh, so God. flirty. I was so flirty. Maybe that's why also your dad didn't like it. Maybe he saw it in you, the spirit of flirt. Yeah, I mean, I got it from him. He was the flirtiest <laughs> person I've ever met in wives, my life. Yeah, yeah, of course. And he had like little mistresses on the side, too, that oh, we found out about. Yeah, he Awful. was a little slut. Oh my God. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, slut. He was a slut. He was a little whore, but. <laughs> Wait, going back to the subject. I forgot what we were talking about when the guy came, when the guy with trash came. We were talking oh, about. Oh, we I was talking about friends. how. Yeah, no. I mean, I had, none of my friends were Arab or Muslim. And my one Muslim friend, he hated her. She was like very loud mouthed. She would like cuss all the time and like talk about boys and he hated it hated it and so he's like i don't like her i don't want you Does she wear hijab we're still best friends till this day if you could talk to all of my polish uh, viewers who are against arabs as as a general concept because most of the world is like yeah it's a, a bad rap that you have absolutely what well, how would you like make people understand it better and like pinpoint the best parts of it and reasons why it's 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 silly to be scared of it and name everyone terrorist like how would you that's a great question i feel you, like yeah when somebody calls you a terrorist what do you say like i laugh now you now you just laugh yeah because what like what am i doing i'm living my life i'm hanging out with my friends i'm going to brunch on a sunday i'm traveling i want to go travel the world you know like i'm not here to kill a group of people like I, I let lizards out of my house like I'm not a violent person you know I think if it was like they I think people just need to keep in mind that every group of people has so every culture has like a bad group of people right like every culture black people here have stereotypes Mexicans have stereotypes like everybody has like and I feel like that gets represented for the whole culture Arab people, we're like actually very peaceful. We're loving, we're very accepting. Muslims even more because it's part of our culture. In our, in our religion, Islam, it says, if you kill one person, it's as if you killed all of humanity. That's in the Quran. So we're not allowed to like, unless we're like in self-defense or at war, we're not allowed to kill somebody at all. Like it's a huge sin to kill somebody. So whatever they're doing, ISIS, Al Qaeda, whatever, that is nothing to do with our religion. That's their own vendetta. And I feel like we're being represented. You had a fly on your hand. I feel like we're rep being represented by this small group of people. There are Arabs in everyday lives that you might not even know are Arabs, right? And we're just regular people. We have the same interests as you. We have the same hobbies as you. And I'm telling you, if you came with me to Middle East, they would love you. They would love you because they want to see diversity. They want to see like people learning about us you know, and actually getting to know our culture, our food, our ways. Mm -hmm. So don't let a bad group of people on the news represent the whole culture and religion. Because mm -hmm. also Arabs are, most Arabs are against those. I think majority of Arabs are against what's happening in the world. And I feel like we're, a lot of us are tired of like defending ourselves constantly. No, I don't agree with this. No, I don't, I'm not violent. No, I don't, you know, we just want to live in peace and we just want to live our lives like everybody else, like you do, like the rest of the world does. Not constantly like speaking out and defending what we believe in. It's like, no, these are like, there's a whole different group of people, you know? I'm an Arab, like you see me, you know, I just, I just love to live life. That's it. That's a great way to finish the episode. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. Yeah. 
Okay, so I think that finishes up the episode. Thank you so much, Zara. Thank you for having me. Thank you for doing this. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of Polish Girl in America. Bye. Bye. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Woohoo, we did it. Some boob sweat happening. You got some sweat on your shirt, girl. Oh, fuck. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Can you blur it out? No, I can't. Is mine showing too? No. Yeah. Thank Jesus. I think my armpits might be though. It's hot. Am I looking at the camera? Sure. Okay. And we'll see you in the next episode of Polish Girl in America. Bye. Bye. Cool. And let's do the same. I'll take the mic just in yep. case it wasn't the Absolutely. good sound. How'd I do? You did great. Is I talking too much? No, you did great. You did awesome. Can't wait to so edit sweaty. it. Okay, so I think that finishes up the episode. Thank you so much, Zara. Thank you for having me. Thank you.